Hey guys, welcome to a new episode. What we have today here is the SROC X870E Tai Chi. Tai Chi Lite. Okay, starting off with this motherboard. Okay, this motherboard is catered to Ryzen 9000 series processors. Of course, you can also use your 7000 series or 8000 series processors on this. Okay, because it's running the same Zen 5 architecture and the AM5 socket. So what's nice about this motherboard is that in line with new power requirements of processors, okay, most motherboard manufacturers have amped up their VRM configurations. In this motherboard, you've got a 27 power phase configuration of 24 plus 2 plus 1. The best part about this motherboard is that it comes with 110 amps of smart power stages. So if you're into enthusiast overclocking, it has you covered here. Let's move off to something, something which is more relatable to the consumer market. Okay, M.2 configurations. This motherboard has four M.2 configurations. You've got one, two, three over here, and one tucked away over here. So the good thing about this is that this config, this M.2 slot, uses SROC's easy unlocking method, whereby all you have to do is just push this circle, this button-like thing here, and it's off. This M.2 slot is PCIe 5.0 already, where else 1, 2, and 3 is PCIe 4. As for the X16 slots, these are also PCIe 5.0 already. Moving on, you've got 4 RAM slots, which support speeds of up to 8200 MHz out of the box. For a regular consumer, I don't think you're actually going to be chasing that kind of speeds. But if you're into enthusiast overclocking, by all means, go ahead. This is the motherboard you need to push those RAM speeds. Besides that, you've got Q-code LEDs, smart buttons, fan headers, plenty of I.O. ports to choose from. You've got six SATA ports. You've got a front USB Type-C port. You've got USB 3.2 for your casings. You've got ample of fan ports. You've got ample of ARGB connectors. That you can actually plug into the board. Moving on, what's new in X870E boards? Of course, you've got an excessive amount of PCI lanes. The, 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 the E in X870E does not stand for excessive, all right? It stands for extreme. So besides the PCI lanes, okay, the pretty new feature of this motherboard is USB 4. USB 4 has insanely fast speeds. So this motherboard comes with two USB 4 connectors. Besides the USB 4 connectors, you've got 3.2, 3.0, a plethora of USB ports to actually use and utilize on this motherboard. So if you're like me, where I need at least six to seven USB slots, it's a perfect choice. As for networking for this motherboard, this motherboard comes with a 5 gigabit per second RJ45 connector, quite fast LAN cable speeds, okay? But here's the best part. The motherboard comes with Wi-Fi 7. If you're not sure what Wi-Fi 7 is all about, please go ahead and check it out because you'd be really amazed with the speeds you can achieve on Wi-Fi 7. There's still an embargo on pricing, so I'm not allowed to reveal it, okay? But it's not going to be cheap. It's definitely not going to be cheap. All the more with USB 4, the cost of implementing these features on motherboards would gradually scale the final price of a motherboard being sold. So what do I like about the board and what do I don't like about the board? It's pretty subjective. This is just my opinion. What I like about the board is the color scheme. It's black and silver. It's not like the X870E Tai Chi, which is bronze, black, and too much of RGB going on in it. The Tai Chi Lite series focuses more on performance and lesser on aesthetics. So if you want RGB, you look at the X870E Tai Chi. If you don't want RGB, this is your choice. I love the VRM configurations, the amount of power and juice it has for your processors. I'm okay with the number of M.2 slots, however, I would have been more happier if this was also using ASRock's easy release method. I guess that's about it as to what I like about the board. What I don't really like, it's very subjective as I mentioned earlier, 
is the size of the board. It's an EATX motherboard. For EATX motherboards, if you're not using an open test bench, you really need to research into the casing you are going to decide to put this in. Off the bat, what casings I know that would actually house this motherboard easily is the new NZXT H7 Flow. I have a link of it in the description below. That's a review we did a couple of weeks back. The Fantex P620, that's one giant casing for this giant motherboard. You can also look at the Lianli PCO Dynamic XL. The XL should fit this easily. Other than that, a Corsair 5000D would actually be able to fit this in. However, you need to check on the panel of the, the internal side panel of the Corsair 5000D. Beyond Coolmaster HAF 700, easy. It will definitely fit. So I guess that's about it for casing options and what I like and dislike about the board.